The MLS regular season has come to an end. We're getting ready for the playoffs, and there is probably very little doubt that this has been the most successful year in the history of the league. In large part, most of it, because of the arrival of Lionel Messi, who has been invigorated as of late, and we thought this was going to be a two, three-year deal. Everything about Lionel Messi says this is going to be much longer. He is happy. He is loving life. And he is setting an example for other of the big star players to come to MLS and have their lay of the land. Have the world be your oyster. And it don't, they don't all have to go to Miami. But if it's like Cristiano Ronaldo or Neymar or one day Kylian Mbappe, Antoine Griezmann, they want to come here. The sooner the better. They can change their lives. Messi has proven that. Messi obviously is unique. We know that. There's only one Messi who can create that. Cristiano Ronaldo's right there, but he's still not Messi. And it has made this league all the better. You go anywhere in the world, you see those pink Inner Miami shirts. You look at the traffic that the club has created. The other day, they played New England Revolution. It was a Saturday. I checked the YouTube highlights on a Monday. There were 3 million views of that game, which was an incredible game where New England went up 2-zip. Inner Miami scored 6 unanswered to win at 6-2 setting the all-time points record in MLS. Pretty incredible stuff. Some of that rubs off on the league. Their numbers are up across the board, social media-wise. We've been well-documented how Inter Miami's social media numbers have gone absolutely through the roof. But it is pretty, it's pretty incredible when you think about it. And we're going to go over all of that and what Don Garber said at the Leaders Week here on the Soccer OG, check out the Soccer OG podcast where all podcasts are available. Like and subscribe us here. And uh, we'll continue to make some great videos. So stay along for the ride. So Lionel Messi's appeal is massive. And it's a big part why Don Garber at the Leaders Week in London said soccer leagues around the world would be in much more better shape if we operated as a single entity akin to MLS. He would also add... Ask the people. They would say, boy, MLS has got it right. I can see you rolling your eyes. Okay, I can see you. I understand. I roll my eyes a little bit too when you see that. Maybe uh, the commissioner's got to come down a rung or two. But there is a lot of truth to what he's saying. I'll let you know. Now, the criticism I know that coming from the masses about that is the promotion relegation argument. And he did talk about it. It's not going to happen anytime soon. I believe promotion relegation will make MLS better, not today, but in a few years, because you can't turn around to your owners and say, hey, you're going to invest three, four hundred million dollars. Uh, you just built a new stadium. Hey, you're going to get relegated. It doesn't work that way. Maybe in 10 years, when you settle in on 30 teams, you have this team in San Diego coming, you stop it right there. And then in 10 years, you make it worth everyone's while. They say, if you get relegated, there'll be an apparatus to get back up. You'll get a big cut of the money from the sponsors and the broadcasters. So do not fret. I think that makes it strong. But not for the reason that you think. It's not because of the magic of promotion relegation. It's because a 20-team league would be much more powerful than the 30-team league we have. You have those top 20 teams. This league can knock it out of the park. And imagine, because one of the things that sticks out about MLS is his relationship with Liga MX. No other league has that. A in-season tournament where they have this, they have this competition, maybe there is a, a time when these two leagues combine. Imagine a 20-team league with Inter Miami, Seattle Sounders, LA Galaxy, Chivas, America, Tigres, Monterrey. It's not far-fetched. It certainly could be in the future. But that's why you have promotion relegation. Not because of the magic of Luton Town or Como. Those teams come up, we get excited for two minutes, and then we don't pay attention to them at all. We pay attention to Man City and Arsenal and Bayern Munich and Barcelona and Real Madrid. The promotion relegation, it's, it's very sweet and nice. But once it's run its course, we're not watching Ipswich. We're not watching Southampton. We're not watching Como. Maybe George Clooney is, but we're not. We're not watching Cadiz. People want to focus on the top teams and the top stars in any league. So as we break down, that's promotion relegation. Again, I am a supporter. 
uh, we break down the other things that may have give the benefit of the doubt to Don Garber. We talked about the relationship with Mexico, unprecedented. What about the Apple TV streaming service? It has its flaws. I know the last two years under Apple and I work for MLS, less people are watching MLS games on TV than they did when they weren't really watching a lot back in 2021, 2020, uh, 2022. But this is a thing to build towards. Don Garber talked about streaming and 98% of Americans have at least one streaming service. We don't know if streaming is going to be the be all end all. We don't. I have my doubts all the time. But Don Garber said if that happens, they will pivot. Right now they have a 10 year deal, which not a lot of places have, and it's global rights. So Apple TV, they are the apple of the eye and MLS uh, gets to places it's never been before. Obviously, the Premier, maybe that'd be appealing to the Premier League, but they sell their rights to so many different broadcasters that it's an astronomical price tag. Same with the Champions League. So another thing that uh, Don Garber has that many other leagues don't is stadiums. Soccer-specific stadiums are popping up all over MLS. It is, uh, a, they are demanded by the commissioner and the league, and they're state-of-the-art. Inter-Miami is going to have a new stadium in 2026. That's going to be a game changer. New York City FC is going to have a new stadium in 2027. Game changer. Have you seen the stadiums in Europe? Have you seen the stadiums in Italy? Dilapidated, old, smelly. Uh, very few clubs, even the top clubs, don't have state-of-the-art places. Tottenham Hotspur has one in England. Man City's relatively new. Arsenal's relatively new. West Ham plays at the Olympic Stadium. After that, old parks, small parks. Manchester United, they need a new facility. MLS has that. So the rest of the world is looking say, we want to play in buildings like that. New stadiums are not going up in other parts of the world. It's just the truth. So I'm giving you some good data here. Uh, obviously, Messi getting a league which is going to draw star power. You also have the situation with avant-garde ways, new rules in place which are being imitated in other places. Uh, they are enacted. MLS Next Pro has a pick your opponent uh, apparatus for their playoffs. If there were playoffs overseas, I'm sure teams would consider that because why not pick your opponent for the playoffs? They are trying and teams and leagues are paying, playing, taking notice. Now, if you think that everyone's happy with promotion relegation overseas, they're all thinking the same thing. Man City doesn't care about uh, Leicester or, or Southampton. They want the strongest league because it's all about the money. The, mo the stronger that league is, the more the money is. They're all expanding. And um, by the way, Apple TV gives a lot more inventory. Every league, every destination is looking for more inventory. So the Super League, we, we heard that, that's going to come back again. These big clubs are looking for consolidation and money. And if the Premier League one day said, these are our best 20 teams and got rid of or minimized promotion relegation, it's not far-fetched to believe because they want that strong 20 teams because those 20 teams can, much like the NFL does, they, they send the messages out, this is our league, these are the teams to support, and, and sadly, relegation may take a hit. I don't think it will happen. But if you want to make the utmost amount of money, that's something that you certainly have to consider. So while it did sound a little bit crazy with all the things that he could be saying, there is a lot to be impressed about the way MLS does it. There are flaws. Trust me, I know. I deal with it. I know people aren't watching a lot of MLS right now. I know the product sometimes doesn't quite deliver uh, the, the level that we see uh, on a regular basis. Although one thing you got to say, it's entertaining. There's high scoring games, there's goals, it's an entertaining uh, league. And recently, Opta, I believe, listed as the ninth best league in the world ahead of the EFL Championship. I'm not going to get in this debate on which is better. Uh, you're not going to win that, you're not going to lose that. But the ceiling for MLS is a lot higher than the EFL Championship, the second division of English soccer. And how many big, who's the biggest star in the EFL Championship? MLS, you have the biggest star in the world. You have Ricky Pooch. You have Evander. You have Olivier Giroud. You have Hugo Lloris. 
You have a long list of good young players, Facundo Torres, that are coming from South America. While you have 29 teams, the width and breadth of it, it's <laughs> the ceiling's much higher. So I'm not going to sit here. I know the AFL Championship has its appeal. It's a tough league. But entertainment-wise, it can't match up to it. And if they're 9 and 10 now, they're just going to keep going in that direction. MLS will continue to grow. We're also in a country that's going to be hosting the World Cup in 2026. We have this FIFA Club World Cup. I don't know what that's going to look like. It has its issues, but everything is happening here. Uh, the Club World Cup is going to begin in Miami. That Miami thing is going to be the center of the soccer universe for a lot of reasons. But then that World Cup is going to change everything. Everyone wants to be in here again. I'm sure the Copa America is coming and MLS has a little piece of the pie. So yeah, we can roll our eyes about Don Garber and what he is saying and maybe leagues chuckle a bit and they're not envious, but MLS is on the forefront and they have a huge edge. Certainly being new helps and you got to give them the benefit of the doubt as they're less than 30 years old, but they are on the forefront to kind of change things up. And I know Europe is looking at that and they're looking for a lot of the things that MLS does that they wish they had. MLS will keep getting, you look at the growth from 10 years to five years ago, the player base, the young players, what can I tell you? We'll continue to keep tabs on this, but we're looking for interesting stories. So make sure you check us out here on the Soccer OG. Like and subscribe us here. Leave us a comment so we can communicate to talk about what are the big stories that we should share here. And let's get ready. We have November coming around to talk some USMNT. And of course, we have the conversation that will roll on regarding the World Cup. But MLS can puff its chest out, has some things to work on, but it's a long list of things that are already working.